welcome. So today I will talk about how to facilitate small group discussions or tutorials. Uh, my name is Mohammed Al Hadi, Mohammed Al Ghasim. I'm a clinical skills instructor at St. George's University. So what are our objectives for today? So we need to know what is tutorials or a small group discussion and why are they important and then I will talk about how to prepare your, your students for a small group discussion the most important part of of having a successful small group discussion is to prepare your students before they have the session and then I will talk about how you can facilitate such sessions and because most of the discussion that happen in small group discussions is questions and answers so what so I will talk about those questions strategies that can promote critical thinking then I will talk about what are the common problems that happen during small group discussions and how you can handle them so let's start with the first set of objectives so definitions and importance of tutorial so when we talk about small group discussions or small group sessions in generally so small group sessions are, or discussions so the size of a small group is very and I'm sure that professor had addressed that issue in his lecture so it is different in different literature but usually or most of the literature it's usually usually they think about having five to eight students is optimal for problem-based learning or for case-based discussion and to have a successful small group teaching you need to have a purposeful activity so why do you want to do small group discussion because you want to address specific objectives that can't be addressed in lectures or in beside teaching or in other teaching methodology and your students should actively participate in those sessions and according to the reference you should be face-to-face -face contact although now as, as we do in this master program some of our activity are not face-to-face -face, are online so yes we can do small group discussion via online uh, platform okay so why small group te teaching or learning is important uh, when you have a small groups uh, when you have a small group of students you can know their names you can know their previous background their previous experience interest so that can help you to tailor your discussion and your teaching and it promote engagement between them you and the content and usually in small group discussion you can move beyond the level of recognition of basic concepts so instead of asking uh, what are the causes and define the following you can ask even more advanced level of, of cognition so you can test their you can test their analysis skills their reasoning skills and how they can critique each other and they can demonstrate to you how they can solve uh, problems if effectively and also when you have a small group learning that can foster this, the reflection on learning so the students will reflect to you what they learn and how they will use what they learn in solving any future problem and also the students will learn how to work together in a group how to tolerate each other how to accept other, other uh, or how to accept their colleagues opinion how to critique their colleagues in a, in 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 a, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a constructive way so that will help them to be a good team member in future so we discuss the definition and importance 
So how can I prepare my students for a small group discussion or tutorial? It is very important to prepare the students for small group discussions or tutorial. So if we fail to prepare them for the small group discussions, it will not help us whatever. It will not help us. Uh, no, uh, all our efforts will be lost and it will be difficult for us to have a proper small group discussion. So preparation is vital. And we, in, if we can't do that well, you know, it will, it will be difficult for us to manage their learning during the discussion itself. So, we need to have a clear learning objectives. So, for example, you have a physiology course, or you have an anatomy course, or biochemistry, or for example, you have cardiovascular system, or you have medicine course, and you decided that you want to add small group discussions as a part of your teaching, as a part of your teaching methodology. So, what are the objectives for this small group discussion? So each small group discussion should have a specific objectives or specific task or outcome. So the students, by the end of this discussion, they will define the following. They will identify, they will analyze, they will mention, they will use. So there has to be something very clear. Ideally, they need to have some sort of case study because many research evidence showed that if the students cannot connect what they learn in basic science with patient care, they don't, they don't feel that those informations are important and they need to remember them. And if you are using those case-based discussion for clerkship purposes, you have to have a case and you have to make sure that your case is realistic and it's a common problem and and, 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 and it is really useful for the students to discuss that problem. Then you have to give the students reading assignment that can help them to solve the case problem and to achieve the learning objectives. And if you assume that the students will, will search their own reading assignment, that's the wrong assumption, the students will not do that for you, especially if your term or if your course is very busy, so they, 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 they will not do that for you. And also you have to be very specific, so for example, if you are discussing a specific problem and you give them like a reading assignment, read chapter, cardiology chapter from Harrison or from Davidson, which is more than 48 pages they will not read that chapter for you and that and actually by giving them an realistic reading assignment you are already giving them the excuse for coming unprepared so it should be realistic that's something that students can cover easily so they can come prepared and then you have to have a clear system or guidelines for a student assessment throughout the small group discussion if you will not assess their preparation, they will not come prepared. Their interaction, their achievement and professional behavior. So you can have like a checklist or a rubric or whatever tool that you find useful and so you have to give them points. So if they, if they show up prepared, they get those points. If they show up unprepared, you, they lose those points. Their interaction, how they learn, did they answer the questions, did they, did they do that task properly or not, and then their behavior during the small group. Do they res respect their teacher, do they respect their colleague, are they willing to participate or not. Lacking of any assessment system eventually will affect the student's preparation, it will affect the interaction, and whatever effort that you do will not be useful if the students are not doing their maximum effort in preparation and interaction. It is not a one-way process, it is a two-way process. So if you have to prepare the students to do their task, so that will make your task very easy and straightforward. Okay, so we discussed how to prepare the students. So. We already give the students a handout, 
that it has that that has that it, it contains the objectives, the case study, the reading assignment, and the students already aware about how we will assess their preparation, their interaction, and their achievements and their professional behavior. And now they come to you today, and you you supposed to facilitate their small group discussion for today. So how you can do that? Generally, if we are talking about any teaching methodology, there is a universal structure for that teaching methodology, which is called set, dialogue, and closure. And that universal system is applied to lectures, to small group discussion, skill station, whatever kind of teach or what, what whatever teaching methodology that we use, we have to introduce the students to that session we have to facilitate that session and we have to close or summarize at the end so I will use that framework to explain how you can facilitate a small group session so you have to introduce them to the session you have to facilitate or dialogue the session and you have to close the session at the end set or introduce the session so you have to check and just lay out how the students should see it is very important and I will show you pictures in the in, in, in my next slide and you have to check equipments do you, do you want to use flip charts and marker whiteboard and marker blackboard do you want to give them some handouts during the small group discussions do they need to bring their paper their laptops their computers because you will do you will ask them to search for something so you have to make sure that all equipment that you need are available next to your hand so the layout if you can see in this picture so this is the teacher and those are the students and she's using a flip chart so if your discussion is closed discussion like uh, and, and what I mean by closed discussion the answer for your questions is, 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 is known and clear for example if you are discussing how to approach poisoning patient or passive physiology of heart failure or the role of renin, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the renin and utensil testosterone system or the preacal plexus for example the answer for these questions is well known and it is written in references so for that kind of discussion this is, a, this is a preferred way of seating the students the students need to sit down and either you facilitate the discussion or one of them facilitates the discussion by using the flip chart or the board but if the topic for discussion has no clear answer there is no true false answer like for example uh, uh, communication issues how to break a bad news ethical issues the appropriate way for handling a specific situation in, in different population so the answer is not clear and there is no black and white for that kind of discussion this is the best way for sitting so everyone will feel that he can participate and they are open to discussion and if you can see from this picture it is very difficult to know where is the teacher and the more that the group are in uh, the more the teacher is 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 a good facilitator he will be able to involve all of them in the discussion without the need without the need of without any need to ex uh, for for him to talk too much or or to say anything just by simple questions he can gather their idea and he can he, he can guide their discussion so after you you, you decide about the layout uh, you have to set the mood and establish usefulness you have to state your learning objectives and you have to discuss the ground rules and this is very important for discussion because sometimes you know during discussion you know people tend to be a little bit anxious or aggressive or the and 
some of them tend to be argumentative and they don't want to uh, they uh, and they may get very angry or they may insist on their uh, on on their ideas or they and they may handle their colleagues with disrespect so a lot of problems happen sometimes during a small group discussion so putting ground ru ground rules will make your life very easy examples so you have to tell them that you have to be punctual yeah we have to finish on time so they shouldn't talk over each other no interruption they have to respect each person's contribution I respect other viewpoints mobile off come prepared join the discussion keep personal ideas outside and we have to maintain confidentiality so you can use those ground rules and you can just mention them once in the first small group discussion and then you don't need to repeat them every session unless you felt that one of the students break one of these rules so you can remind him please remember our ground rules you have to respect your your your, your colleague you have to switch off your phone and so on. and dialogue so you have to use the flip chart appropriately so let us watch together this video it will give us a nice explanation on how we can use flip charts appropriately Hello, my name is Ken Norman of New Tricks Training. Today I'm going to share with you some top tips and trade secrets for using a flip chart as a real alternative to PowerPoint. The great thing about a flip chart is it's low technology, there's not too much that can go wrong with it. It's on, it's off. If only PowerPoint were that simple. But like PowerPoint, there are some rules to using a flip chart, and I want to share those with you now. So, first of all, one of the problems that people have with using a flip chart is keeping their writing nice and neat. So tip number one is to roll some faint pencil lines and that helps Keep your writing nice and neat. Another tip is this. And that is to write first then you can talk. Now the great thing about that is that it gives you license to just turn your back on the audience for a moment or two. Unlike PowerPoint, where people tend to gaze at the screen and lose eye contact with the audience, because you're creating something for, for them, they're much more likely to bear with you while you write. It also helps keep your writing nice and neat again. Third tip then. There's something called flip chart blindness or white chart blindness, and that's our inability to spell simple words sometimes when we stand up against a flip chart. Well, by writing the word in there in full, faintly in pencil, means that you can just overwrite it in the heat of the moment. You can also write yourself very faint notes on here. Refer to them, the audience can't see them, and you're on track keeps you on track. Again, like PowerPoint, you sh can use too many words, so only use key words. And a maximum of 20 on any one chart. This has reached 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, any more than that, and it starts looking too busy. So 
use little icons and drawings as well. You can draw images for the audience as well. And actually, once you become quite accomplished at this, you can carry on talking to the audience. And here's a little drawing that I often use when I'm asking the audience, why? Why would we give a presentation? And again, audiences are always impressed when you create artwork for them. And in fact, all you're actually doing is just going over the faint pencil lines that you've already prepared in advance. A lot of people say to me, but Ken, I just can't draw. Neither can I, I must admit. All I've done here is simply put a picture on my laptop and project it at the flip chart. Then I've taken a pencil, gone round it faintly, and then when I stand up, I just fill in the pencil. Symbols. So there you have it, some top tips for using a flip chart as a real alternative to PowerPoint. So, so you have to use the flip chart or the blackboard or whiteboard appropriately. And then you have to conduct your session and you have to involve all candidates without pressure. So use the appropriate methods of questioning and I will address that later on. You have to control dominant candidates and you have to stimulate absent candidates. And you have to balance involving all candidates and not uh, without too much uh, with, with, and you have to do that without too much pressure because sometimes some adults they don't like discussing too much or talking too much. So you may ask them questions to make sure that they are on the same page with you and they understand what are you dis what, what are you discussing. So if they are on the same page with you, that's fine. You don't need to make sure that, no, they have to be active, they have to participate. Some others, they don't like that. So if you try to involve them too much, they will hate the session and they will not learn anything. Okay, so how to direct the question? There are different methods. So, like, ask the questions and then name the students. So the question is, so, where does aldosterone work? Mm, let me ask. Okay, Ali. Or, name the student, then ask the question. Oh, mm, Ali? So, where does anti so how does antidiuretic hormone work on the kidney? Or ask the question, then choose a volunteer with open hand technique. So each one of these kind methods of directing the questions has advantage and disadvantage. So if you look at the first one, ask the question, then name the students, or the second one, those two kind of questions sometimes it will put the students under pressure. So for example, if the, if the tutor asked me or if, the, if my teacher asked me the questions and I didn't answer, I'm not prepared, he, he, they will take points and I will feel embarrassed in front of my colleagues. So they, they usually put extra pressure on the students. So if you conduct the whole of your session by doing those, by using those two types of, of, of questioning, the students will be very anxious and that will affect their thinking and their engagement. So what I suggest is to use the last one. But usually what I do in my small group, usually I, 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 will, I, I will start with the first, with the second one. So when I have my students list, so I start asking by their uh, checking the student's name and asking them in a random way so that they can predict who will be asked next and that will give me an idea about who is prepared and who is not prepared and I will do that, I will do that for the first 10-15 minutes then after I figure out who is prepared and who is not prepared then I will start asking the questions openly and I use my hand and I will show you in in next slides how to use your hand so you can use the palm of your hand 
and you can direct your hand to 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 two or three of students who sit next to you so one of them who knows the answer will answer for you so they will feel less pressure so instead of pointing one student now you are you are pointing two to three students and any one of them can answer the question so use the open hand technique for questioning avoid avoid pointing finger it is intimidating and it's humiliating and we have to agree that we can't teach the students and humiliate them at the same time either we teach them and we are a teacher or either we humiliate them and in that and at this point we are no longer teacher for them and also you can use your hand to control dominant candidate <coughs> sorry so if you have one of your candidates who is talking too much and who want, who want to answer all questions you can politely simply give him your hands and tell him okay Ali can you just wait a little bit and give your colleague a chance to answer so he will understand that you know that he knows the information and he will be calm so you can continue your session then you deliver the content appropriately so that according to the learning objective and remember that your question should promote critical thinking and you have to keep to time once you are done ask for any questions and answer them summarize the learning objectives briefly and terminate the session so we finished our today's session and thank you very much see you on next session so your roles as a teacher is to establish and maintain the chair role, outline the task or the objective, get the opinion systematically, and then record their opinions, and you take the discussion from one point to another point, you maintain them on the task, enable absent students to participate and control dominant candidates, and you can use your body language to control. So what are the questions that can promote critical thinking? So the following are examples of questions that can be used by the teacher to help the students to think more critically and to have more fruitful and useful discussion. So evidence. So for example, if you are discussing, for example, a case of a nephrotic syndrome and the, stu and the students uh, give you like, for example, this could be minimal change uh, minimal change glomerulonephritis so you can ask him what is your evidence for that and he will tell you oh the patient is child the patient is asymptomatic the proteinuria is so and so so he knows he can support his 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 state clarification so for example if you ask about the pathogenesis of tuberculosis and one of the students told you that it is, it is a chronic granulomatous inflammation that happened in the lung due to mycobacterial infection so you can ask him you can ask him explain to me more tell me more about that explanation so what could be the cause for that tell me more and if you felt that one of the students didn't, didn't didn't give you a proper explanation you can ask another student linking and extending it would be also really nice if what for example if one of your students mentioned something and after a while another student mentioned something to you can ask them okay what do you think about what Ali and 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 and, and, and Osman mentioned do you think that what they mentioned is related to each other how it could uh, for example how we can make a connect between what they mention and hypothetical sometimes I use that kind of questions if I want the students to include many differential diagnoses so for example if our patient is having chest pain and shortness of breath so I ask my students okay let us assume if you had a viral infection seven days ago and that chest pain is, for example, really uh, is, 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 is relieved by bending forward. What could be the differential? 
so the students will think about, oh, it could be pericarditis, it could be, it could be. Causes and effect. So you can use that also kind of questions. Summary and synthesis. So usually after we after after we do a discussion about about many issues, so we can we can ask our students, okay, so now let us summarize what are the appropriate questions for a patient who presents with the following problem. And usually I usually I usually ask that question to the, the students who is unprepared. So when I feel that he's unprepared or he couldn't answer, I will tell him, okay, uh, okay, Jones. So we will have a discussion and I may ask you to give me a summary at the end of this part of the discussion. Is it okay with you? Then he will start taking some notes and I will ask him about, what's, what do you think? So let, I will ask him about, for example, give me a summary about, about the issues that we discussed and he will give me a summary. and. That will help me to make sure that he got something from this session. Finally, I will discuss about how you can handle problems or difficult situations that can happen during a small group sessions. So, one of the biggest problems for small group tutorials is that the teachers lecturing rather than conducting a dialogue. And Sometimes I feel the reason for that problem when the teachers feel this, that the students is unprepared. So, if you give the students a clear preparation guidelines, objectives, and reading assignment, and they come unprepared, you have they they, they should be penalized for that. And if you feel that they are completely unprepared, it would be okay if you postpone the session. Because it will not, it will not, it will. It is not beneficial at all to conduct a small group discussion with unprepared students. So you can simply say, "Look, I don't feel that you are prepared. So let's postpone this session for another time. So you have to come prepared. And unfortunately, today you will lose all your points for this session. If the teachers are talking too much, and this is also sometimes happen." For young facilitators, sometimes they, they would like to impress the students that they are knowledgeable and they are competent. But remember, if you are talking too much and if your students are not contributing or participating, they won't learn from that session. Sometimes the students are reluctant to engage the discussion and they respond only to, 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 to tutor questions. And usually we notice that when the students are not familiar with the small group discussion. So for example, in, in, your, in for example, let's talk about, for example, Khartoum University. If they decided to add small group discussion for, 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 uh, for, for example, for, for in final year. And the students has no any previous experience with the small group discussion. So they will fail they will feel like it is, it is difficult for them. It is really difficult for some students to discuss with, 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 with other, to, 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 to mention their, their opinion, to support their opinion, and to have a, a useful discussion. So if you are planning to use a small group discussion, you have to use as many as you can so the students, the students become familiar with those kind of session and that will help them to develop and to become more 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 th that will help them to develop their teamwork ability so they can join any discussion they can share their idea and they can respect other idea if students are not prepared so if they are not if you are not giving them a clear guidelines they will come unprepared and if you give them the guidelines and they come unprepared, take 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 from their points. They have, and even even if you they are missing too many points, you can you, you can simply you you, you 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 can deny them from having the exam if you feel that small group discussion is is, is important part of your course. Individual students sometimes they dominate or block the discussion. So if you have a dominant student, you have to understand why he is dominant. Is he a good student who is knowledgeable and who wants to share 
everything so in that situation you have to acknowledge that you know that he is knowledgeable and he is prepared but you have to remind him that he need to uh, give the other colleague chances to speak or if he's having a problem, he's frustrated, he's angry, he's anxious, then you need to talk with him. And if he is destructive for students, so it's better to ask him to leave the group and then you come and discuss his problem with the course director. So you you can so you can decide how you can help him. Some students want to get the solutions rather than discuss the problem so for example they want to know the diagnosis and they want to know the treatment and they are they, they, they don't they are not keen to discuss the the symptoms and to think out and to do proper reasoning and and the best way to solve that problem is to do a proper structuring for the case and for the handout so you have to make your case or your handout or your or 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 your small group session is can be solved without discussing these issues but if you give them everything that they need to know in the case so you give them all the symptoms and the signs and the investigation results and you want them to discuss uh, uh, symptoms and signs they have they have already the answer in their handout so they don't feel that they need to discuss anything so when you make your case for case based discussion you have to make your case you, do, you shouldn't give all the, the details so they can think about further questions they can think about uh, doing further examinations or uh, and requesting further investigations so if you have any questions or any comments please send me and we can discuss together and and, and if you have any feedback please give, send it to me so we discuss the importance of tutorial we discuss how to prepare your students for tutorial how to facilitate tutorials and strategies that promote critical thinking and how to handle common problems and difficult situations thank you very much so you can check these references it has really very nice information and if you have any questions please contact me at those emails and thank you very much